the brand new Hellraiser movie is now available on Hulu. But the big question that you're probably wondering, is this movie scary enough to watch? We're going to figure that out right now. The way this is going to work is that I'm going to categorize how scary this movie is into four different types of brackets. The first one is how much gore is in the movie. The second one is the amount of kills that are in here. The third one is how violent is the antagonist and how violent is the movie in general. And the fourth one is how many jump scares are in the movie and are the jump scares in here actually scary? And in order for this bracket to be successful is to count out how much blood is in here, the amount of gore that takes place, whether or not it's disgusting, and how much torture do the characters go through, and do we as the audience feel or see anything torturous while watching the movie? So how bloody is the movie? There is a good bit of blood that's being spilled either by messing with the Lament configuration or the Cenobites deliberately splicing and delivering their body parts one by one. It isn't really as excessive as the first Hellraiser movie. That one used a lot more blood than this one, but there's still a good amount of it that you would be able to buy that these people are in amount of pain. For a movie that does have an obsession of killing people and splicing them up, there's still a good amount of blood, at least with how much there should be. In terms of the amount of torture, it's a Hellraiser movie. There's absolutely going to be characters in significant amount of pain and agony and anguishness, and I'll get to that in other sections of the video. And for the gore, like I said before, there are people that get spliced and decapitated, and limbs just come off of people's body parts just one by one, so it absolutely does its job within those categories. So for the amount of blood, I would say that it gets itself a 4 out of 5 because it isn't as much as the first Hellraiser movie, but for the gore, it absolutely gets itself a 5 out of 5, and for the torture scenes, also gets a 5 out of 5. And with calculating all three of these sections, the bracket for blood gets itself a 14 out of 15. The next bracket we're going to be talking about is the amount of kills that are in the movie, and what succeeds for this bracket is whether or not a it warrants the R rating that it actually gets, or if it is PG-13, does it need an R rating? And if there are any kills in here, how grotesque can they be? And if and for a main protagonist, does it feel like that there are several traps where it feels like there's a lot less room to escape? And that could be taking place either physically, where there's a literal trap onto them, or mentally, where it feels like inside of their head, there isn't really much room to escape. So how are the kills in here? There's at least seven of them, and one of them that got killed was from a Cenobite, but like I said from the bloody section, the kills in here can be very hardcore. Not only do they die in a terrible physical condition, but it works great in an acting perspective, story perspective, and mental perspective. There's one character that gets killed off off screen, and you have no idea what happened to them. It's left ambiguous, and those kinds of deaths are terrifying because of how ruthless the Cenobites can be with their deaths. The deaths in here aren't even quick. They can be slow and agonizing, mostly because the Cenobites want to thrive off of the anger anguish suffering our characters go through. The Cenobites want these feelings to last forever because they believe it's something everyone needs to experience for a lifetime. They see immeasurable amount of pain ultimately as everlasting pleasure. It's straight up evil. As for the traps, the Cenobites existing in front of them is the beginning. They'll do whatever they can to make sure you make the choice they want you to make, or make it seem as though you signed their contract and owe them a debt. Once that comes in, pain begins to inflict. So this bracket in the kill section is a huge sweep. All three of these sections get a 5 out of 5 in my eyes, which means this entire kill section is a 15 out of 15. The next bracket that we're going to be talking about is how violent can the movie get? How violent are our characters? What's their personality like? Do these characters have no ambition to stop what it is that they're going to be doing? And how brutal can the movie get? So, how violent can this movie get? Well, there's a lot to discuss in here. A ton of disturbing imagery when looking at the monsters in the film is definitely successful. They all have a dedication and obsession to thrive pleasure through pain. Not just for themselves because they love it, but to show it and spread it to others. They'll either trick them, persuade them, or enforce them to join their cult and embrace their mission. This film absolutely earns the R rating because it is hardcore dedicated to making our characters suffer physically, but also emotionally when it comes to the story, especially with the main characters. And oddly enough, it works through the main theme of what the movie is going for. Our main characters suffer by acting on their own selfish desires and ambitions due to unexpected consequences. 
causes. You do, however, dislike them because of how ignorant and stubborn they are to ask for help or to take better care of themselves, but there is definitely a relatability factor towards them because it's understandable that people want to be their own person, handle their own situations, but are at the same time lazy to get things going. Again, it makes sense because we have selfish desires. So yeah, tons of brutal things happen in the movie, and I think that in terms of rating this film for the violence, it does get a lot of things correct. For the personality section, I'm mostly going to give this one a 4.5 out of 5, and it's only because some of our main characters can be a little bit of annoyance, but sometimes it does work when it comes to telling the story, though. As for the other two sections for motivation and brutality, they absolutely get a 5 out of 5. And with calculating all three of these sections, the violent bracket gets itself a 14.5 out of 15. And the final bracket that we're going to be talking about is the jump scares. We're going to be talking about how many jump scares are in the movie. Do they actually work or do they work effectively? Can they linger on where they can make a good impact on you? Or are they just there just to make you a little bit tense because they just did a very loud noise? If you guys enjoy watching these videos, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified when future videos are out. And be sure to like and comment down below what did you think of the movie Hellraiser and whether or not you thought the movie was scary. So when looking at the jump scares in this movie, this is actually the weakest aspect of it. However, there is a total of six jump scares that happen in the film, seven, but I'm not sure if one of them actually does count. But as for the jump scares themselves, they're mostly in a pattern, so they're not that hard to see coming sometimes. There are some that can get you off guard a little bit. I think there's one in the third act that's a little scary. But other than that, when recognizing the pattern, it's mostly because of the Cenobites appearing, the Lament configuration doing something to them, and some twists and turns that happen in the movie, but they're really easy to figure out. Some are even too easy that it's kind of insulting. Even when they are somewhat unexpected, they're not really that shocking or frightening. You'll understand when the scares sometimes happen with a loud noise coming in but it's mostly the kills and the violence that make the film scary in all honesty so i'm gonna give the rating of the jump scares a 1.5 out of 5. so now that we've calculated all four brackets it's time to go ahead and figure out the actual percentage of how scary hellraiser actually is and when combining all these calculations out here the percentage of how scary hellraiser is is at 90 percent now, just because it's at a high rating, it doesn't mean that this movie is fantastic. There are still some errors in here that does fault this movie to not necessarily be like a really good film. But to be honest, this whole system isn't necessarily calculating whether or not this movie is actually brilliant. It's calculating whether or not the film is actually scary. And I do think it actually succeeds in that. And it succeeds with the theme and concept that it's talking about. And in terms of execution, it works very well to that advantage. So to be honest, for those who are actually curious to see this movie and actually like the first Hellraiser movie, I think you'll find some of the things in here to work pretty well and you'll get a good bit of a scare in here. What did you think of the movie Hellraiser? Did you think it was scary? Did you think it was not scary? Do you agree with this rating system or do you think that this rating system needs to be updated a little bit? Put your thoughts down in the comment section below and let's have a conversation about it. And like this video if you agree with what I say or dislike this video if you disagree with what I say. I don't mind the dislikes. So that is it I have for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be sure to see you in the next video.